Hi boys and girls, I'm here to teach you a little bit about being a poet and how poets use their um, poet eye to see ordinary things in extraordinary ways. So I want to read the poem, a poem to you called Pencil Sharpener. It's by Zoe Ryder White. And see if you can think about how this poet was hearing things in an extraordinary way. Ready? Pencil Sharpener. I think there are a hundred bees inside the pencil sharpener and they buzz and buzz and buzz until my point is sharp. Do you really think we have bees inside of our pencil sharpener and that's how our pencils get sharpened? Well, of course not. We wouldn't want bees in our pencil sharpener. But do you see how this poet, Zoe uh, Ryder White, talked about how there were bees in there? Like in our pencil sharpener is extraordinary. It's strange, right? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a look at some of these ordinary objects. I have a staple taker outer. I call it a staple eater because I think it looks like it has some teeth on there. Can you get a good picture of that? Doesn't look like it has snake teeth. And just an ordinary leaf. I have a clothespin, a tongue depressor, an acorn, a ring, and an eraser. So these are really ordinary items, aren't they, boys and girls? So what I want you to do for a second is I want you to look at these objects and then I want you to hit pause for a second. But while your video is paused, I want you to think about what you think these things could be if we use them in an unusual or extraordinary way. Okay, so hit pause and then think. Okay, boys and girls, I'll bet you that you probably picked this staple eater because it's pretty neat. If you look at it, you could pretend that it was a snake, couldn't you? And it was, it was biting you, or maybe it was a dog, or maybe you turned it this way and it was walking. I don't know what you were thinking. The leaf, I'm going to actually choose this one for my drawing up here, and I'm going to choose this cute little acorn top. Okay, so you turn with me, what I'm going to do is show you because you're going to be doing a paper in a few minutes that looks kind of like this. We're going to go over that up close, but just so you get an idea of where we're going to go with this. So I'm going to do my leaf and I'm going to think about, this is an ordinary leaf, but how can I make it extraordinary or special like Zoe White did with her bumblebees inside the pencil sharpener? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my leaf out. I'm going to draw a bunch of leaves, first of all. I'm going to draw my first leaf, and then I'm going to add some sticks to it. My sticks are going to be purple in this picture. And I think that I'm going to add some ground. Does that start to look some, something interesting to you? I'm also going to make one on a flag. I'm going to make a nice tall flagpole and then I'm going to draw another leaf going this way. Do you see boys and girls how Mrs. Forcing is thinking about a leaf in a different way? This is actually going to be a house and I'm going to make a cute little bug under here because I just made a house for a bug with my leaf. Now you don't have to do a bug. You could draw whatever you like. In fact you don't even need to pick a leaf. Some kids might think it might be fun to have a leaf. You could draw a leaf, and it could even be, oh, I don't have a blue. I guess I'll just use my purple to make some water. And now what do you think that could be? Maybe it could be a sailboat. And maybe I could draw a bug friend for my other bug on here. So you see that I took my very, very ordinary item, my leaf, but I turned it into some extraordinary things. And you could even add a second one if you want. I thought this little acorn was so cute. Can you see that up close, Miss Johnson? Isn't mm -hmm. that clever? That is clever. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to become a little bowl for my bug. So I don't have a brown marker with me today. I think I'll just use this little pink one. 
and I'm going to draw myself a little acorn right here, and it's going to be for food. Okay, so now you've seen how Mrs. Forsting was thinking about an ordinary object in an extraordinary way. Okay, now you don't have to pick the same as me. You could pick whatever your teacher has in their classroom. Maybe they picked completely different ideas. You can think about it for yourself. Okay, so let's take a close look at this paper. Okay, I'm going to bring it closer to Miss Johnson. Okay, so at the top, it says your name here, and then it says, Today I learned that poets see ordinary objects in extraordinary ways. Let me show you what I know. So you're going to skip this part for a few minutes. You're going to choose one of the objects to use. Now, like I said, your teacher might have different things. So this time, I'm going to choose the clothespin because I think it's pretty clever. So if you look here, it says, I have a... Now, I'm going to write the word clothespin, but I don't even think I know how to spell that word. I'm going to have to try to stretch that out. Let me think about that for a second. K, k, close. Hmm. I'm going to put a Z there. Did I write that backwards, Miss Johnson? Nope. You're nope. Right. Close. P, 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 in. Clothespin. I have a clothespin. It is ordinary. When I look at it like a poet, I think it looks like, what do you guys think? Hmm. Do you know what I'm imagining? I think it looks like a person. Now maybe that's not what you guessed, so you have a different poet's eye than me. So then what you're going to do is you're going to draw a picture with your markers or your crayons or whatever you want. So I would draw, try to draw something that looked a little bit like my clothespin. It has two lines on it. You see that? And then it has kind of a middle section and then it has a circle on the top. I don't know. That just reminded me of a person for some reason. But I have to add some eyeballs and maybe a mouth so it really does look like a person. Because I have to make it look extraordinary. And maybe I can give it some arms. That looks funny, doesn't it, boys and girls? <laughs> That's making me laugh. And then maybe I think I'm going to add this into my picture. Doesn't it look like it could be a snake? That's what it reminds me of. So I'm going to draw a snake down here. This is the wiggly line. And then I have to try to draw those, those sharp things. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do there. Maybe I'll just make like some points sticking up like that. I don't really know. I'm just going to try my best try. Hmm. I don't really know about that picture. Well, it's my best try, boys and girls. So this is the one that I put down in my words, but you can add extra things if you want to, okay? So I hope that you enjoyed thinking like a poet and looking at ordinary things in extraordinary ways. Bye.